So when I was discussing with Robert what I should talk about, he told me just um, tell your story. So I prepared it and uh, I called my presentation freelancing an alternative approach to publishing. And it's because I, when I started to do uh, the publishing work, I actually uh, didn't plan to become a publisher. I just became the publisher by, by chance. And uh, I'll tell you this story. And uh, I just turned something what I met by chance into something that became my life aim now. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to talk about happiness because it's the value I sometimes think that people are forgetting about. And several years ago, uh, I could have a huge career in advertising, but I decided to quit because I was not very happy. And I put on one hand money and career and on the other hand uh, time, the quality of time. And I decided to choose time because when you turn back you can see how quickly the time runs away and I just wanted to do something meaningful in my life and when I published my first book and became a publisher I just found out I may influence something and I decided to be that person and uh, I just found out that I don't want to be like the typical um, publisher because I really do not understand uh, uh, the way to do things only to have a profit. I really believe that uh, my life and not only my life, but maybe life of my readers or the society might be better if I uh, try to bring something a bit alternative. And... Um, so I called my presentation freelancing an alternative approach to publishing because I would like to share my story that is a bit different. Um, so let me introduce myself a bit. I'm, uh, um, I'm a journalist or I studied journalism and I was working for advertising for a while. Um, but uh, in 2012, uh, uh, or actually a bit earlier in 2007, I decided to become a freelancer, but it took me a while to join the freelancing community that was um, uh, set up by Robert. Uh, but I started to be a freelancer already in 2007. You know, later through uh, my life, I became an independent publisher and a literary documentarian and also lecturer on self-publishing. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's uh, really uh, something very specific because uh, I, uh, I just, uh, you can uh, see me mostly that I'm selling books, writing books, producing books, publishing books, talking about books, <laughs> teaching about books. And uh, really, and you can see just behind me that uh, I'm really, uh, uh, my flat is really full of books and uh, I've got so many stories, uh, for example, with people from insurance company, they were asking me how many books I do have at home and I uh, told them like several tons of books, so they were a bit scared, uh, but that's another story. Um, but uh, this is uh, the way I just simply um, <laughs> simply became a person who is really occupied uh, with books. Um, I've got a very nice history because my mother was a li librarian. So like, you know, yeah, I, I couldn't uh, like avoid being, uh, not being uh, with books. I simply am a, a person of books and uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, my story was a bit different uh, uh, from other publishers because I my life plan was to become a literary documentarian uh, like having uh, my background in journalism and media theory I just was trying to focus on I wanted to be a war correspondent uh, and so on but. Uh, um, uh, it was very easy for me to start to work in advertising uh, in 2005, but then I just uh, decided uh, to do something more meaningful 
and I started to work on documentary projects. And uh, in 2012, I've published my first book. And uh, there is a funny story that we had several problems uh, to publish the book. So I just uh, take all my money I had. Uh, I, I was saving for buying a flat and instead of buying a flat or, or a furniture to my, uh, to my flat, I set up the, the publishing house, you know, so uh, now I can live like uh, under, <laughs> under shelves with books. <laughs> mm. I really uh, like to talk about my publishing house, that we are small art publishing house and we are oriented towards not only, but uh, mainly on gender focused art books and uh, that uh, me and uh, people I cooperate with, the creative people such as photographers, write other writers, um, as well as editors, proofreaders. So we love to publish books there that are ambitious both in content and design. Uh, there is one specialty and this is very important. I always repeat that I'm not interested in mainstream. There are so many publishing houses they are interested in mainstream and they, um, they are focusing on having a great profit. But I prefer to focus on the niches as uh, Robert said already. Uh, so mainly like um, uh, the content uh, is... Uh, is uh, not very mainstream because we include voices uh, of women, seniors, people with disabilities, and we pay attention to non-mainstream topics such as ecology, feminism, aging, activism, parenthood, and so on. So this is something very specific. And uh, it's always like that if you prefer to do more culture than business, so that's something I really do. So it's very difficult to, um, to earn on a living from such things. And I would like to share with you several strategies how you can combine that, because I think it's really important because uh, it's not always like about choosing if you would like to do culture or to do business, you can combine it uh, somehow creatively <laughs> if you're a creative people, so you can uh, combine it uh, uh, somehow and uh, to uh, really do something what might be both a bit and uh, I have just one note like related to to this um, to this presentation and this is the thing I was uh, thinking a lot about it lately it, that um, I was asking myself why I'm doing that and uh, uh, not not choosing, for example, to to publish I don't know erotic novels or Swedish uh, writers uh, to be safe and do things like that. And I just found out that the most important thing for me is to leave a mark, you know, to to change a society maybe a bit with my books. So I I've chose this a bit alternative way. And I would like to describe this alternative way. This is um, the, those are the books that I was working on. They are not all of them, but most of them. And as Robert mentioned already, so I'm focusing mostly on the documentary content. So, for example, there is a book uh, on uh, interviews with uh, with uh, uh, female uh, artists who are discussing. Uh, um, uh, um, the topics related to parenthood. So they are describing different strategies, how to combine art or the career with uh, being mothers. And there are several interviews, interviews with fathers as well. Or there's another book that is uh, opening um, the topics uh, about the documentary content. So those are interviews with uh, film documentary filmmakers, writers, but also documentary artists or, or scientists who are generating uh, or uh, bringing the documentary content. And uh, the, we are discussing how to read it, how to have a relationship with people. It's about ethics, about, about values. And, uh, and this is something what I really like to do, not just to 
do documentaries, but also think about the documentary content and approaches to, the, to making the documentary content. Or there is a book on self-love. We were inter, uh, interviewing, for example, uh, women that had various social backgrounds. So they were successful women, but as well um, uh, um, um, people with disabilities or homeless women or women who are living with their kids in shelters for mothers and kids and so on. And it was based on the study by Professor Zygmunt Bauman, who was discussing the fluidity of uh, of the time and the values in contemporary world. So it's always like combination, not just of the co documentary content, but as well, we are, uh, it's a transdisciplinary um, approach uh, that we are trying to combine, for example, sociology or historical topics and so on. And there's also a book on a man who, who, was, uh, uh, who was in labor camps in 50s so, and so on. And uh, you can see that uh, I'm producing um, books that are uh, very ambitious in, um, in uh, their appearance. And it's because uh, it's, it's uh, connected to ecological uh, um, uh, issues as well, because uh, I believe once you buy a beautiful book, it's like buying a crystal vase and you can inherit like to your children or it's some kind of treasure or jewelry and you keep it in the library and you just don't throw it into the dustbin or or just you don't burn it or or um, it's also connected with the that we are doing books in limited editions so if if you would like to purchase the book so you keep it forever and uh, once it's sold out we do not do uh, reprints and um, you will see later why I'm thinking about such things because I was influenced by several people I really admire. So I'll, um, I'll uh, um, explain it a bit later. Um, the, the, my, um, actually, I became a freelancer in 2007, but uh, I started to do publishing in 2012. And it's uh, connected to my first book, Slechny. I'll talk about it a bit later as well. And uh, so it means that next year uh, we will celebrate 10th anniversary. Uh, but like after 10, almost 10 years, I'm asking myself if it does really matter if we won several awards and such things, because um, having uh, a unique feedback from people uh, they are reading our books it's always uh, very very specific and it relates to uh, to verbs as that we are changing something that we are affecting something that we keep something like we are uh, talking about the historical things uh, mm, we are protecting specific things like through our books and we are also amplifying voices that are no mainstream. So for me, it's it, it, what really matters to me, it's something different than just to, to, to have awards for our work. Um, this is the first book with it. Uh, it's called Slechny and the book was about unmarried and childless women. And it, it, uh, it was the beginning of my career as a self-publisher, but also later I became a publisher. And uh, um, since 2012, I started to cooperate with Czech artists, writers, photographers, amazing artists really who are doing performances, theaters. And we won several international competitions and in 2016 we won also the highest Czech prize um, Magnesia Litera for the book that is on, on a picture. Um, we were with my photographer I cooperate a lot with uh, her name is Dita Pepe so we produced this project that was very conceptual like um, it was a specific concept that we were combining tags with photo albums and uh, um, it, it, it was a huge success also for us because we succeed uh, abroad with this book and my only idea like living within the typical Czech context was that 
I, I will just one day I'll build this uh, successful publishing house and when it will be successful enough and there will be opportunity to sell it. So I will sell it and then I will have nice holidays for the rest of my life or something like that. But uh, I was lucky enough that in 2017, Uh, I had an amazing opportunity to study in Australia at the University of New South Wales. It was part of my PhD uh, that I could uh, spend six, almost six months in uh, Sydney. And uh, I've met there this amazing woman whose uh, name is Susan Hawthorne. And she's a publisher and uh, uh, she is also a writer and poet and uh, Uh, I've got this uh, small but very nice story because, as I mentioned, I'm a daughter of librarian. So the first uh, place I'm always uh, visiting when I'm abroad, so it's a library. And uh, when I started to study at the university, the first day I immediate, immediately went to the library. And uh, this library uh, has like 11 floors or 13 floors or something like that. And I choose by chance floor number three. And I just get out, uh, get of the lift and uh, I was looking around and this was this huge floor full of books and all of them were gray and dark blue and black, but there was one pink book and you can like understand that because my first book was pink. So I was really curious <coughs> to look at this pink book and uh, I just take this book and this was a book written by the Susan Hawthorne and the name of the book is um, Bibliodiversity Manifesto for Independent Publishers. And this book simply changed my life. I read it through and I understand a lot because it uh, discusses very, very important things, how the books are influencing culture and people's life and how it... Um, how it influences agenda setting, you know, and how it influences the way we are thinking about things and how do we, uh, we how we can change the culture abroad. And um, I, I wrote an email to Susan and uh, we've met and then I interview her and then I went to visit her in Cairns and uh, Um, I just like two years later, it's a spoiler, but two years later, I translated the, um, her book and it was published in Czech Republic. And uh, uh, this word bibliodiversity became a very crucial word for independent publisher these days. Uh, it's, uh, it, um, it was connected to, uh, to COVID situation. But I do not want to discuss it further because uh, I may speak like three hours about that. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it really influenced my life and I will tell you about it a bit more. Uh, so um, in, uh, since 2017, I really changed my mind and I could understand that uh, I'm not here to sell my publishing house, but to uh, be an amplifier for, for others. Uh, who are not uh, um, successful or uh, strong enough or noisy or, or brave enough to, to enter the public space, but they can do it through their books or through their writing. So um, yeah, it was a really breaking point for me. And uh, I have to say that uh, I'm uh, now, um, uh, that I, I really feel that uh, Like having a publishing house is really very important thing and it's a, a good strategy how to intervene the public space. And I would like to talk a little bit about the concept of bibliodiversity. Um, Susan talks about this concept uh, uh, that she is uh, comparing publishing books to organic publishing or organic farming, uh, that it's better to do it slowly and uh, with responsibility and uh, in an ecological way it means that if you are trying to have really fresh and healthy and uh, sweet tomatoes it's not good to um, use any artificial addings or or to uh, to 
uh, make it uh, grow quicker and it's uh, about not spoiling the ground by using all those uh, the, all those chemicals and uh, I don't know the exact words how it's in English but uh, you know what I mean <laughs> and not using all those dan dangerous um, dangerous things against insects and so on so it's same with books so um, I, I really uh, enjoy to publish my book slowly. Sometimes it takes three, four years to do the book. And all the time I'm like hand in hand with all people who are involved in book production. I mean, with writers, we are consulting a lot. We are trying to find a proper money to pay, um, to pay the writers. Uh, we are trying to find the best uh, graphic designers, but I mean, not just the ones who are really talented, but also we are trying to uh, find the proper person who might be, who might become a good friend with the rest of the team, because I really believe in good relationships within the publishing practice. So uh, it's not just about uh, producing the book, but like making a family around, uh, around every book I do. So uh, uh, I really believe in in um, in things that uh, uh, Susan is talking about. It's uh, publishing is uh, should be something like uh, bringing diversity of experience. I mean, if I'm a woman on a wheelchair and I'm 17, I really wish to read a book about my experience. And if I'm a Vietnamese woman who is living in Czech Republic and uh, is 70. I, I really wish to, to read a book also about this experience or if I'm, uh, or if I'm a farmer from, uh, from uh, uh, the, the village who was abandoned by his, by his wife, I also want to, to read a book about such issues because it's not about perfect people and about mainstream experience of successful people, but I really believe to, um, in sharing also uh, different experiences so and because I'm doing in documentary content so it's not very difficult to uh, publish books on such topics uh, the the whole concept of bibliodiversity is also very connected to responsibility sustainability it means that we are publishing as I already said uh, the small numbers of of books and uh, we are not reprinting it once it's sold out uh, we really believe in ecology, so we are printing on uh, on amazing Swedish ecological paper. Uh, they are using only windmills and uh, and water mills and uh, all those like uh, 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 elect electricity from such uh, uh, sources. So I'm really focusing on every aspect through the book publishing. And I'm also a huge fan of feminist practice. I'll discuss it also a bit later because it's about non hierarchical approaches like within the uh, within the uh, um, my pr publishing practice. And I would like to add one more thing uh, in 2018 um, or it was earlier, but in 2018 we published this book that is called uh, women 60 plus and it's about women who uh, are all um, who are becoming seniors uh, but especially in the Czech context when you're a woman 60 plus uh, there is such a huge stereotype that you're not valid for the society anymore in, uh, when I was in Australia and working and meeting Susan Hawthorne, I just received an email from an amazing Czech documentarist and oral historian Pavla Friedlova, who wrote me, I have published already like eight books on women and they published everything. But when I brought them the book about women 60 plus, they asked me who would read such a book? Who cares about women 60 plus? And I got so upset that I uh, I immediately published this book, and I I became um, uh, it was clear for me that uh, this is really a, like publishing might be really a political act. So this is one of my approaches that I I I uh, declare that uh, the books I'm doing it's uh, the political act. Uh, 
and uh, uh, you can see that it's it's really an alternative approach to publishing because i'm not thinking about the profit and um i don't care about efforts a lot it, it makes me happy you know i can't say that it don't it, it, uh, like a receiving price doesn't make me happy but uh, I, uh there is something more behind that as well and uh when I returned back from Australia, I, I, I was thinking, what should I do next? And uh, I, I just found out that I have to accept that and uh, make this approach an advantage. And uh, I hope you, you will see that it might be an advantage in the end of, of, of my talk. Uh, and uh, just recently I was discussing with uh, with uh, Veronica who is helping me now with uh, with production and uh, and with uh, um, with uh, other things around publishing house we were talking about it and I found out that there are um, other things behind my work and it's about shared knowledge that I, I really wish to share knowledge with uh, with people and uh, share experiences because that can make us a better human beings. You know, if you once meet a person whose uh, husband was shot uh, in the restaurant, or if you meet a woman that was, uh, whose uh, child uh, um, uh, was killed, or if you, you once meet a woman who is fighting a lot uh, to survive on the street, or uh, once if you, meet a prostitute who who was forced to do that so you will never be the same person so this is also the reason i'm doing documentary because i believe if i publish such voices uh, we can understand more like um, different uh, uh, people's approaches and their strategies and uh, their way of thinking and uh, i really believe that we uh, it can make us better human beings and I would like to introduce you another amazing woman. Uh, her name is Diane Bell, and uh, she's an anthropologist. And I met her also in Australia. Uh, as a single mother, she went to the desert areas in 70s and uh, became very famous for finding uh, new knowledge about Aboriginal uh, women. Uh, when she went there, uh, her colleagues were telling her, you are uh, uh, already late, we discovered everything. But she uh, was a woman and she's got very different perspective. And she found out that there are rituals and uh, uh, religious acts that uh, might happen only in the presence of other women. So men could never see this uh, because uh, she was a woman, so she could be part of uh, those rituals and uh, all those uh, activities uh, because men were excluded. So for me, it was very interesting to hear uh, that, uh, that story. Um, uh, because I could realize this as a woman, I have a different uh, perspective and I'm, uh, my experience of the world might be a, a bit different from, uh, from the men's experience. And this woman told me about uh, three books that really influenced me a lot. Uh, those are these women. The first one was written by Shulami de Reinhardt, and I think it was published already in 1992, and it's called Feminist Methods in Social Research. And the other books were um, written by Charlie Nadja Hesbiber. Uh, she was the editor of those amazing books uh, that are related to feminist research practice. And it helped me a lot uh, to work uh, within the documentary space. Uh, all books, they are discussing alternative approaches, how to do interviews or how to work with the text. Uh, it discusses ethics, it discusses uh, uh, opportunities, uh, it discusses uh, relationships with people and uh, it's about sharing and it's, um, it's, it's very alternative way how to do the research. But uh, I really believe this is something what influenced also my documentary approach, 
but also my publishing practice. Because after reading those books, I had to think about the way I'm working with people or what voices I'm publishing or uh, who I would like to work with or uh, what is the topic I should bring. And uh, um, those books are also discussing things such as uh, reflexivity, subjectivity, um, interdisciplinarity. So it's something I, I already uh, did. Uh, but now I'm I'm doing it like uh, like more focusing on such on such things. So I'm, uh, when I'm writing uh, the stories of old women, I'm always thinking about the historical context, or I'm thinking within the category of gender studies or sociology. So it's a combination of more approaches, not just to bring the story, but uh, put it in a specific context and, for example, uh, to write um, uh, the introduction that uh, helps to tell something about, about the writer or the position of the writer or the way how people should think about the stories or uh, what, what is the most important thing they should focus on. And uh, as I mentioned, it's also about inclusion. So. Uh, I'm now preparing, for example, the books that are one of the books is about a relationship and about very um, interesting uh, friendship between a very young girl and uh, the old woman with mental handicap, with mental handicap, or I'm uh, working on the uh, on the book. Uh, uh, with one writer who just asked me if if he uh, can bring me his project on LGBT seniors, like people who are more than 80. So those are such topics that I'm really, really interested in. And uh, I always believe that it might it may change something within the society because for example still in czech republic uh, um, the same um, sex uh, partners cannot get married you know so if i bring such topic uh, like uh, into the public it may change and affect something so this is the way i'm thinking a lot and there is one moral line talking about non-hierarchical approaches and this is something what I really believe in and uh, I really wish that everybody like within the publishing process has the same right to tell the critique or to complain or uh, to bring something new uh, because I really believe that when we are sharing also our professional views on, on the topic the result may be even better so it's about non-hierarchical approaches but I already found the limit of that because um, last year I was working on a project and uh, I just let everybody do what they wanted. And uh, uh, it was not just about the collapse of the project and about book, but also about my collapse and the collapse of publishing house. So I had to write down my own manifesto and I would really recommend to everyone to have something like that. But because whenever you, you're like in such situation, you just read it and find the reason why you are doing that. And the, the main line in this manifesto is that I build this public house to have the freedom and do what I do what I really want to do with people I really like and uh, so it helped me like to solve the situation so um, it's very good to think about non-hierarchical um, um, relationships but also you have to be uh, the one uh, who, who can have the right uh, uh, to decide the, the final to do the final decision and the problem is that uh, uh, people think that uh, having this non-hierarchical approach means uh, that you can tell uh, the critic, but uh, they are forgetting about their own responsibility. So the problem was that someone, somebody was cri uh, was criticizing somebody others, uh, the uh, others, uh, the, the work of the others, but made a lot of mistakes in uh, her own part of the project so it's always also about bearing responsibility and this is another book i would like to talk about uh, it was written by kate ravot uh, this is the czech translation of the book but the original name is donut economics 
and I guess this lady comes from Great Britain, but I'm not sure about that. But I, I believe it's uh, it's uh, the place she really comes from. And for me, reading this book helped me to quit all all my all my um, fears and. Uh, I just found out that the it's the whole life is not about like having all the huge profits of the work or or to think about uh, uh, like uh, selling uh, selling uh, the publishing house and uh, do things to generate something. But she talks about the responsibility to people and to planet. And uh, if I push too much, it uh, may mean that uh, I will uh, I will destroy the environment. For example, if I print 10, 10 uh, millions of uh, the books and uh, the most of them will be thrown away, that uh, the, the planet will lose, for example, one forest. Or if I'm like thinking... Uh, too much on my own profit it could mean that uh, the writer would be starving you know <laughs> because uh, I, I wouldn't pay uh, enough money for her or his uh, work so I was thinking uh, I started to think a lot about this content uh, uh, in, within this context and uh, I think it really helped me to calm down and uh, to think about other values in life, not to just to, to uh, ensure my position, but also help uh, uh, to ensure the position of others or to be responsible for, for my behaving. So I would really recommend you to, to read this alternative approach to economics. Uh, I wrote down several, uh, several uh, notes. Uh, what I really do believe in uh, and how do I understand my publishing practice. As I already said, uh, I believe it's a political activity because I'm bringing the topics that are not uh, very common or they are common, but they are not discussed, discussed properly uh, within the public space. And uh, I really believe that the book is something what um, might be an intervention within the social space that I can uh, that I can bring new voices or fresh voices or I can um, I can uh, bring an alternative uh, alternative uh, opinion. Yeah. And uh, it's very specific because uh, last year I was working on the book that was called Milk and Honey. And it was a series of, I already talked about this book. It was about sharing the experience of 35 artists, female, but also male artists and curators and, uh, and uh, documentaries and uh, uh, on parenthood. And uh, like, I, I would say like half of the interviews was really, really crazy discussing like breastfeeding on a in a public space but the, like uh, this guerrilla breastfeeding or it was about about uh, the art using uh, diapers you know and things like that and I'm not really a huge fan of uh, like such activities or it was about alternative school systems and uh, but really alternative so you cannot even imagine how alternative it was and uh, uh, but uh, even if i um, uh, even if i didn't agree uh, with uh, half of the opinions it helped me to think about other things it helped me to think about my uh, own approaches, you know, and about my attitudes to something. And it, it helped me to solve some personal situations later. So it's about reading also and publishing also uh, things that I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not a fan of them, but uh, it, I think it, it can help uh, as well the readers to think about things more broadly. And I also believe that publishing practice is about agenda setting, especially of known mainstream topics that we are bringing those topics on LGBT or about special communities and, and so on. 
And uh, I have to say that uh, working within this independent publishing industry or space is very, very specific. It's definitely a long run. Uh, as I mentioned, it's some, sometimes I work on the projects for three, four years. And uh, um, if you would like to have a profit from such projects, sometimes it's take, it takes 20 years. It, it takes time. Uh, but it's also a very, very slow activity. So we are back to this organic farming that it's, you have to really focus on every step. And uh, uh, we are having a lot of discussions and brainstorming within our projects. And I really like it because it's about creativity. It's about um, uh, being influenced by very inspiring people. It's about sharing uh, the no specific knowledge or it's about uh, seeing specific topics and uh, results or, or uh, projects through different eyes. And I, I, it, it, it enriches me a lot. And uh, the third line is very specific. It's very good not to be dependent on, on publishing, like this type of publishing. I have chosen this. Uh, uh, to be independent on the money that uh, I generate from my publishing house. And I, if I generate certain money, I always put it into new projects because I believe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's much better. And uh, uh, I decided like that 10 years ago because it enabled like to be free on, uh, uh, it helps me to be free and not dependent on uh, th um, like, um, Maybe the, 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 the best idea is that uh, if I'm not dependent on that, I can publish whatever I want with uh, whom I want to. So it means that I can choose uh, various topics. Uh, I can choose uh, the artists who are really problematic. Uh, and sometimes it takes them 10 times to finish the project. But I don't care because I don't have any specific strategy and I... I really don't care about such things. And, uh, but it also means that I have to work a lot. Uh, and uh, this is the reason I'm cooperating with Robert Black, for example, because uh, being the, the member of uh, Navolne Noze, it helps me to have uh, my own clients. I mean, marketing clients and strategies uh, because uh, I'm, I earn on living through marketing and uh, sometimes I'm doing copywriting and so on. So it helps me to generate this money for, uh, for my living. And in the rest of the time, I'm really focusing on, uh, on publishing practice and also writing documentaries because I'm still also uh, the documentary, uh, documentary uh, writer. Uh, so I, I really would like to recommend you, do you if, if you really would like to do some project you really believe in and... Uh, that is the project you want to be free in it and don't think about any limits so um, still um, you have to have still the the some uh, uh, certain salary from for example other projects and keep it really really for yourself because it it helps you to be free and creative uh, in uh, so many levels and you can really do amazing things. I travel in various countries thanks to my books. And uh, there is this line I could have been, for example, um, now because I'm already almost 41, I could uh, be, for example, a creative director in an advertising com company because I was not, not uh, too bad. <laughs> so I might have a certain position today and uh, I could have my own flat or house or uh, Porsche maybe, but I'm not that fan <laughs> of, of, speed, of, 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 of this type of car, but I could have been someone else, but I have chosen to do something meaningful and not just meaningful for myself, but uh, uh, I also believe to, for example, to the society. And uh, I, it's really, uh, I, I had to roll this, this line here because it's very refreshing, liberating and emancipative to believe that money is not the goal and to get another opportunity is a victory. 
because uh, through my work, um, uh, I had so many ex uh, opportunities uh, because I've published our first book about unmarried women. We were invited by Japanese curator to work on a project about unmarried women in Japan. Or we were invited to work on a project about women and violence in South Africa. Or I, I was invited by one Czech Swiss uh, photographer to work uh, on a project about love in Switzerland. Or um, I was accepted to do my PhD studies and I, I uh, went to study to Australia because people believe that my work is really important and they offered me so many opportunities. So I really believe in the line that uh, opportunity is the victory. And uh, th there is a sentence, it must, it must have been love. It's a very popular song by the group called Rockset. And you can see me uh, with Mike, uh, I'm sitting uh, with two Japanese women and uh, we are singing this crazy song <laughs> in one Japanese skyscraper. And this is this opportunity. If I just uh, be a, a boss of advertising company or do something like that or to work on my career, like just focusing on earning a lot of money, I, I wouldn't be sitting in a skyscraper in Japan singing, it must have been love. And I re I'm really enjoying such moments in my life. And uh, this is, I think this is the, the, the goal of our life or it's, this is the aim. Why are we working and why are we freelancers? Just to have such amazing moments and enjoy our journey. So this was my last slide. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram, for example, to follow my work. There's just, uh, I just uh, uploaded there a fresh photo from the printing camp uh, factory like one hour ago because we had an appointment there yesterday with the owner of the printing company because he's supporting us a lot because he believes in our work too. And we became friends and uh, we are here with my photographer Dita Pepe and uh, with the graphic designer Stepan Malovec. And we were enjoying like many, many hours talking, discussing about our new uh, book project. And uh, this, is, this is the life I really like because it's about friendship and it's about uh, opportunities and it's uh, about uh, inspiration and being inspired by other people so thank you Robert for inviting me and maybe you have some questions or something like that if you can just you know like go deeper into how you actually manage running the publishing house without printing extra copies by you know like having some growth in value having uh, these collectors copies like what's the logic behind it mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question thank you for that <laughs> Uh, I would start with this second market or secondary market uh, or used copies market or I, I don't know what's the proper name. Maybe you know the, the better word for that, but I, I don't know it. I, I, I don't know this proper word, but uh, mm, uh, the thing is that uh, it's, it's quite a specific strategy you might have uh, that... Uh, I'm always telling to people who are buying our books that once they can buy new teeth through our books. Because uh, uh, since 2000, there is a specific new target uh, with, the, with the books uh, that they are becoming something like the, like the paintings or like uh, it's, 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 it became a part of art, of art market. So, for example, the first book I mentioned, this uh, book, Sledging About Unmarried Woman, I just sold it for, uh, for uh, such an amazing price uh, lately uh, because there was a collector who told me that he really wants the copy and I had just the, the first prints and he just was able to pay like, I don't know, maybe uh, 300 uh, euros if I'm counting that right for, for the copy. I don't know, if, is it too much or, or 
I guess it's like it's like that. And it was the regular copy. Uh, it was not uh, the binding was very bad and everything, but he he wanted to have it. And so I just uh, uh, sold it to him. And uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, this is one thing. Uh, but the other one is that I've got uh, several uh, regular collectors now that they are having all our books because they can see that it might be in the future something specific because we publish only one, sometimes two, sometimes three books a year. And we are inviting very, very good artists to join our projects. I mean, Libuše Jarcoviakova, who was very successful lately in the Arl Photo Festival in France, or I'm, I was cooperating with Dita Pepe. She's very well known uh, through her series of auto portraits, or I'm uh, working with uh, Indrich Streit, who is one of the most influential photographers, but also with, uh, with very good, um, graphic designers and uh, I have to say that because we are working for example we put a velvet or or not velvet I forgot the word for that but a specific uh, textile on on a book or and we use canvas you know so it's it has uh, another like uh, values I mean it's nice to touch it it's nice to open it uh, we are using specific techniques we are um, uh, it's uh, it's handmade many times so but still I'm trying to keep the price low if you are amongst the first ones who are buying this book so the price is very affordable very very affordable and uh, it costs for example 30 euros so it's not very expensive at all or 20 euros uh, but then when it's sold out I can't control the second market but it's happening because people are now seeing that uh, uh, these books are somehow specific, that we are using good, uh, um, uh, not, we are not focusing on important content, but also the way it looks. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really something like the crystal vase or, or the ring from your grandmother. It's something you really wish to have on your shelf. And uh, when I started the publishing house, the, we were very, very lucky and it was really by chance. But for our first book, we were the first in Czech Republic who were using this crowdfunding platform. And I started to build my community and now I've got like 2000, around 2000 people who are supporting us almost on a regular basis or they're buying one book or another one. So we've got this community who is very, very helpful, like, for example, through COVID, they help us a lot in because they want we can continue and that uh, and that we um, we. Um, we can pay our authors uh, when we were working on that and all uh, bookstores were closed and so on. So uh, so I think the strategy is, uh, or, uh, or uh, because I really wish that everybody who wish to have our book have it. So I'm using this crowdfunding platform and sometimes I'm lucky, but not every time, but sometimes I'm lucky to receive a funding, for example, for, for the project. And I always use this money to lower the price of the book. It's not like for my profit or something like that. I always use it to lower the price that everybody can afford to buy this book. And if uh, they uh, if they don't want to buy it, uh, it's uh, it's possible to uh, to borrow it from the library or something like that. But there are a few people who really wish to collect the book uh, as well, uh, collect our books. I mean, to buy this limited edition, so really limited, because we have the limited edition, of, for example, of two thousand copies. But then we have also limited edition, for example, of thirty copies. And we always include the original photography of, uh, of the artist. And uh, for example, the photography costs, like the, the real photography costs like 1,000 euros, 2,000 euros. But we use the, the smaller format of, of the picture and we include it in the book. So this is our strategy. How again to receive some extra money to be able to publish this book uh, for an affordable price. So it's like a mixture of different strategies, how to pay for the project and uh, 
to um, to yeah to enable people to buy it not to be too expensive and we are really lucky in the Czech Republic because we are very strong uh, with the publishing industry we've got a lot of publishing companies here and uh, for example uh, if you publish you can publish also for for quite good price small editions uh, of the books uh, and it's not as expensive like to publish it in Germany or in China or something like that so we are very very lucky and this is also the reason why our books even if they are like uh, pieces of art they are not as expensive as for example the very very uh, cheaply made books for example in great britain because it's really expensive to publish it in the western country but it's not very expensive to publish it in the czech republic because we can still keep the the prices like on on a reasonable uh, on, on a reasonable price so i hope i i i, I answered yeah absolutely thank you so much <laughs>